You know, the mass media and technical press alike have understandably given Elon Musk and Tesla Motors widespread coverage. But there's another automotive startup that looks poised to launch a revolutionary new vehicle soon, and that's Elio Motors. Now, the Tesla model is more traditional for a new vehicle startup. They make a dramatic, expensive, relatively exclusive vehicle for high-end consumers, then they migrate toward the middle market once the brand is well established. Now, anyone in manufacturing knows that building small quantities of high margin, high value products is relatively simple. The hard part is making large quantities of low margin products and to make money doing it. Now, Elon Musk is discovering this with his upcoming Model 3. Paul Elio, in contrast, is going straight to a low-cost, high-volume commuter vehicle that's innovative while using conventional internal combustion engine technology. Ilio Motors' vehicle is unusual in several ways. It's a three-wheeler that accommodates two seated in tandem, and unusually, the gasoline engine drives the front wheels through half shafts and constant velocity joints in conventional automotive fashion. Other than the very limited production nostalgia three-wheeler produced by Morgan Cars in the UK, Currently available three-wheeled vehicles are Bombardier Recreational Products Can-Am three-wheeled motorcycle and the new Polaris Roadster, both of which are open-top sports vehicles. The Can-Am product is essentially a motorcycle and it's ridden, while the Polaris machine has conventional automotive controls and it seats two side by side. Now in both cases the power goes to a single rear wheel which from an engineering and production standpoint makes good sense. No differential needed, a greatly simplified powertrain assembly and efficient packaging. The Elio, however, is not built for speed, but uses a clean sheet, piston gasoline engine designed for high volumetric efficiency. Now, the firm claims 85 miles per gallon. Now, that's cool, but the commuter market is substantially different from the high-performance sports car or motorcycle markets. Price is everything here, and for the Elio, it's going to generate considerable sticker shock. But this sticker shock goes the other way. A base price of $7,300 for non-refundable reservation holders for the first 65,000 vehicles. Now this price is beyond aggressive. It's remarkable for a mass production vehicle with an AM FM stereo, electric locks, power windows, cruise control, airbags, and air conditioning. The company has generated some interesting numbers for comparison. In 1968, another low cost commuter vehicle, the VW Beetle, carried a $1,699 sticker price. Now in 2016 dollars, that Beetle would cost $11,700. So how will Elio do it? Well, they'll need extremely efficient, highly automated production, and it will need to work right out of the gate. Now, to make sure it works first time, Elio Motors will operate at a former GM facility just like Tesla does, except their plant is in Shreveport, Louisiana, and previously built pickups and Hummer SUVs. Unlike Tesla, Paul Elio has made no claim that he'll reinvent automotive manufacturing. Elio has hired Doug Frick, a former GM engineer who is intimately familiar with the facility, as plant manager. Now, in my opinion, Elio Motors is moving forward with a strategy that minimizes risk and maximizes the probability of success. Elio taps into a local workforce that has prior automotive assembly experience, is building in a cost-competitive jurisdiction, and is staffing the operation with leadership that understands the automotive industry. Elio also relies on conventional Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers to source components which individually have no radical or novel technology. Elio Motors relies on old-fashioned, clever engineering to pull costs out of the product through light weighting and reducing the overall part count. So why the aggressive pricing for the first 65,000 customers? Well, it's because Elio Motors has applied for a $185 million advanced technology vehicles manufacturing loan from the Department of Energy. The loan criteria requires 65,000 reservations, and right now Elio claims just over 56,000. Now at a $7,300 base price, the risk is minimal for purchasers as well, and if real-world consumption figures truly top 80 miles per gallon, Paul Elio may have enough early adopters to ramp up production to true economies of scale. Now five out of six members of the Elio Motors board of directors come from the automotive industry, including a former CEO of Daimler Chrysler. Now with that kind of oversight, it's reasonable to expect that Elio's projections are reasonable and attainable. You know, automotive history is filled with valiant attempts to mass-produce high-volume, low-cost, simple vehicles. In the United States, no startup since World War II has succeeded. No one remembers the Crossley, Kaiser Henry J, Studebaker Scotsman, or the Nash Metropolitan. But those failures didn't have the advantage of CAD CAM, computer simulation, CNC machining, robotics, or DOE low-cost loans. I've been skeptical in the past, but from where I sit, right now, it looks like Paul Elio could make this thing work.